Um, the Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And as a result, Dinesh believes that um, all the evil, listen to this, all the evil and suffering in the universe is completely necessary for us to exist. All the evil and suffering in the universe is completely necessary for us to exist. So I asked him, what did he mean? And here's what he said. Wow, that's a bit of a tough one. Uh, I'll answer it this way. Um, our universe appears to be uh, fine-tuned uh, for life. This doesn't mean that our universe was made solely uh, for life to come out at the end of it, but it does mean that our universe uh, had to be structured in a certain way in order for life, and particularly complex life, the kind of creatures like us who not only live in the world, but have this unique ability to know that we do and to be able to observe the world and also understand it. So conscious, rational, and free creatures in the world, uh, the universe, not any old universe, produces uh, creatures like us. The universe has to be uh, built with very specific laws, and those laws and forces have got to be just so for this outcome to occur. Uh, one uh, physicist, uh, Lee Smolin at Princeton, happens to be an atheist, but nevertheless, he says that you can almost imagine God sitting at a desk, uh, and at that desk are 30 different dials, uh, each dial set calibrated to a very specific number. Uh, and the basic idea is that if you come into the room and fool with the dials and you, you, you move them even a little bit, uh, you, you get no universe and you get no life. Um, the physicist Stephen Hawking, in his book A Brief History of Time, says that if you touch one of the dials, he's talking about the rate of expansion of the universe, uh, and you move it uh, not 10% or 1%, but one part in a hundred thousand millionth million, uh, the universe would have recollapsed, and essentially you'd have no um, universe, no planets, no stars, uh, and obviously no life. So all of this is a way of saying that uh, fine-tuning, uh, one of the great discoveries of science in the past 50 years, is necessary for us to be around. Now, uh, for a couple of decades, this debate about fine-tuning has, uh, um, you know, has been accepted by both sides. Everybody agrees there's fine-tuning, but the Christians and the atheists have a different interpretation. The Christians say fine-tuning points to a fine-tuner, uh, and the atheists say, no, 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 we can think of some other explanation. Maybe there are millions of universes and so on. But as far as I know, nobody has explored the implications of fine-tuning uh, for theodicy, for God and suffering. And what I'm suggesting or, or advancing is the idea that if the universe needs to be so finely calibrated, so fine-tuned for life, doesn't it follow that all the structural elements of the universe, the speed of light, the force of gravity, uh, earthquakes, tsunamis, hurricanes, disease, evolution, all these things that produce a lot of suffering, natural suffering, are really completely necessary because if they weren't around, if we didn't have those things, we wouldn't be here. Uh, so what that means is that we can still bemoan earthquakes and we can still be sorry for the guy who gets Parkinson's disease, but we also realize that if there was a world without earthquakes, there wouldn't be humans around to complain about it.